Hi again and welcome to another movie plot. It takes place after a small Alaskan town was invaded by a clan of animalistic vampires. Only Stella survived after her husband let himself get infected to defeat them, then let himself succumb to the sunlight to hopefully end it. One year after a government cover-up and riddled with grief over the death of her husband, Stella now travels the world attending seminars trying to convince everyone that vampires exist. A mysterious letter from a stranger named Danes led her to Los Angeles where she's giving one of her lectures. An audience of people laugh at her claims of the species invading, but she hopes to convince them with ultraviolet lamps set up throughout the building. It successfully incinerates several of the crowd who turn out to be vampires stalking her for revenge, and the remaining attendees all flee for their lives still not convinced it isn't just a dangerous stunt. The authorities wait outside to arrest Stella where she's promptly taken to the station by FBI agent Norris. As one of the many humans who assist the vampires with keeping their secret, the familiar Norris threatens to strangle Stella with his own hands to gain favor with his master. Instead he warns her to forget about the existence of the bloodsuckers and they release her from custody unharmed. She returns to her hotel room fully aware of the risk to her life should she continue bringing awareness to the species, but doesn't care due to the grief she suffers over the death of her husband. Inside she's met by three amateur vampire hunters looking to recruit a fourth. Their leader Paul relays that they've been sent by the stranger from the letter to collect her, and Todd says that her experience with the vampire threat could be a big help to their team. The third Amber goes outside on lookout and spots a vampire that's tracked Stella down to the hotel. It doesn't need an invitation to gain entry but Todd's able to pin it against the wall for them to empty their magazines into its skull. Stella decides to go with them and learns that they're hunting a vampire queen named Lilith, who they believe to be responsible for keeping the vampires hidden and that she's behind the attack that killed Stella's husband. She's taken to meet Dane and is shocked to discover that he's a vampire, but he's maintained a grasp of humanity due to the wound only being superficial and wants revenge on the vampires. He only drinks blood from his stockpile of blood bags supplied by the hospital, and invited Stella to LA because he believes the vampire queen has carved out a nest for herself here. Stella's hesitant to attack but Paul tells her about his daughter being killed and his wife leaving him after not believing his story of a vampire being responsible. It convinces her to join them the following day where they begin an assault on the rundown LA nest. Dane doesn't join them since it's daylight outside but the four humans enter to find a fresh corpse strung up and drained of its blood. Amber gets scared and attempts to retreat by herself, but they're suddenly trapped inside by a group of lesser vampires with nearly no intelligence. Todd's bitten in the attack and they're required to use all of their ammunition to escape but find themselves locked inside a cellar beneath the nest. He instantly changes but Paul hesitates to kill him in hopes of another Dane situation, but it was a clean bite and the vamp attacks requiring Stella to smash his head in with a cinder block. She then blames Amber for getting him killed who in her anger draws a gun on the new girl to threaten her, but as another reminder of just how dead inside Stella is she welcomes the bullet. It calls Amber's bluff and they decide to wait for nighttime to make their escape when the vampires leave the nest to feed. When night falls Dane comes and finds them sealed up inside the basement but found the rest of the building empty. On their way out a lone vampire attacks them and is easily handled, but Stella decides not to kill him and instead take him back to their headquarters to torture for information. He withstands the ultraviolet lamp and refuses to talk to any of them except for Dane, who he reveals to in their dark language that Lilith's planning to visit Alaska for another feeding frenzy. They decide to release him, and follow him to another nest where they wait until daylight when all the vamps are inside. When asked about what he plans to do after killing Lilith Paul says originally it was to blow his brains out as defeating the Vampire Queen is what he considered his endgame. They begin their assault and come across another two of the human feeding stations but this time one's still alive. They're ambushed again causing Amber to drop the detonator to the C4 lining the walls, but this time instead of wasting all their ammo Stella gets the team to shoot holes in the roof letting in sunlight. She's then able to reach the detonator and blows the side of the building apart letting in enough ultraviolet light to finish them off. Meanwhile just a few steps behind them, the familiar Norris makes sure to eliminate any suspicion of a vampire invasion. He's taken to the queen vampire and begs Lilith to make him an immortal to cure the lung cancer that he's been suffering. She instead has him bring her two humans that she removes the tooth of one and drinks his blood from the gum for some reason. Without any sign of the queen the injured team rescue the survivor and regroup back at Dane's place. Stella's hands broken in the explosion and patched up by Paul and after feeling something for the first time in over a year that wasn't anger, she and he decide to get intimate. Elsewhere Lilith makes Agent Norris prove his worth by drinking the blood of her captive despite him still being human. He does so and when the woman dies, Lilith rewards him by turning him into a vampire and sending him after Dane and the others. At the Slayer's headquarters they question the survivor Jennifer about her captors, learning that Lilith's nest is now aboard one of the ships in the harbor in preparation for the trip to Alaska. 
Just then a knock's heard at the front door, so Dane goes to check it out only to receive a bullet through the brain that instantly kills him. Agent Norris is now an immortal and chases the group into their truck, where Paul puts a bullet in his chest to escape but he just stands back up and keeps on coming. They travel to a boatyard and Jennifer points out the ship that they're set to sail to Alaska and Stella gives her the vehicle to leave as the three slayers don't expect to make it out alive, despite Amber arguing against going inside at all and instead just getting dragged along for the ride. They sneak inside and stow away while witnessing the vampire's ability to resurrect their fallen if their corpses are fed fresh blood. The ship sets sail and they pass through the feeding chamber filled with still living humans hung up on hooks and begging to be put out of their misery. They eventually confront the human captain and tell him to turn the ship around, but he says that they threaten to kill his family should he not follow orders. Suddenly Amber's pulled backwards killing the captain when she accidentally pulls her weapon's trigger. She's dragged through the decks while Stella and Paul give chase, but reach her too late to save her from being eaten alive and shoot her instead to end her suffering. The feeding vampires let out a shriek alerting the rest of the ship, who led by Norris quickly capture the two to be brought before Lilith. Instead of a long villain speech the queen just asks Norris to bleed them dry, and he hangs them up on hooks to begin by slitting Paul's wrist above a bucket. Stella manages to slip a hand free and fights her way out until getting hold of a peg and sticking it in Norris's face. She then grabs a fireman's axe and chops off his head, preventing any future resurrections no matter how much blood his corpse is fed. After losing so much of his own, Paul's barely able to assist in sabotaging the ship's power and leaving it dead in the water. Just then Lilith finds them and bites out Paul's neck killing him instantly, but decides not to with Stella and instead mentally tortures her with insults about her dead husband. With the vampire claiming to follow the scent of her blood, Stella comes across Lilith's bathtub full of it and comes up with a plan to mask her scent. When Lilith enters to see why the scent of Stella's blood's become so mild, she's lured by it to look up allowing Stella to emerge from the tub and get a clean shot at the queen's throat to decapitate her. The remaining vampires on board enter the room, but just like the slayers predicted without their leadership they just quietly stand aside whether it out of respect or fear. Instead of returning to Los Angeles Stella continues onward and returns to her hometown in Alaska, while the truth about the ship is once again covered up by the government. A few days later she digs up her husband's grave and recovers his body to attempt to perform her own resurrection. Having seen the vampires do it earlier and with him being bitten before death, Stella feeds him her own blood and when that appears not to work she opens her wrist completely and feeds him even more. With still no signs of recovery she grows weak and passes out from blood loss, but wakes back up a few minutes later with the love of her life alive and fully recovered. He's also still a vampire though and instantly bites into her neck just before the screen cuts to black. And the movie ends.